Welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A feature on your screen to type your questions to our panelists at any point in our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering. So feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and you'll have access to that recording within a week or so. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Indiana University. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Dexter Turner and I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions with Indiana University. Uh, so thank you all for joining us today. Uh, let's get started with learning a little bit more about IU. Uh, here at IU, we really want you to have the opportunity to know that this is a home and a place where you get that chance to meet new people from truly all across the country and the world. With us, we do have roughly 33,000 undergraduate students with representation from all 50 states and over 140 different countries. So we're really excited to be able to have these opportunities and to give you that chance to, to meet anybody and everybody, but to be on one of the most diverse campuses in the country. Now, as you're going through this process and you really get that opportunity to learn more about IU, we want you to really explore your options when it comes to what you're going to study. Uh, we have 12 different schools on our campus, and this is great because it really gives you that chance to find your true passion and to really determine what is best for you and your future. Within our 12 different schools, we have over 200 different majors that you can choose from. So feel free to mix and match, whether you're going and looking at different majors or minors, our goal is to make sure that you are getting that chance to do what it is that you would like to do. You can even create your own major, which is really great. Uh, as you're choosing your majors, as you're exploring your time through IU, you really will get to utilize our support systems that we have in place for you. And your biggest support systems are actually going to be your professors. Uh, they are great people. Uh, we go against that, that stigma of a large school and you not being able to get to know your professors. That's the exact opposite of actually what happens at IU. Uh, we want you to be able to meet your professors. They want to get to know you. They want to be involved in your life. Uh, so for us, we have an average class size of 30 and a student to faculty ratio of 16 to one. So it's something that's really exciting because you're going to get that chance to be immersed within the community uh, along with your professors, but they want to get to know you once again and help you out throughout this process. In addition to your professors, you're gonna have great support systems all throughout our campus whether you're utilizing any of our peer support, uh, any of our tutoring centers. Uh, we have 24 libraries on campus. Our goal is to really make sure that you have anything and everything that you need. So please make the most of this, but know that our goal really is to support you throughout this process and know that you're never alone as well. Uh, now, during normal times, we're really going to promote that you go and study abroad. Obviously, we can't do that right now, but our goal is to hopefully have that back here soon in the near future. Uh, now, when that does come back, we really will push you to go out and learn about a new culture and broaden your horizons and see different parts of the world, because we believe that that's one of the best ways for you to learn. So really make the most of that. And you don't have to speak a foreign language to go uh, abroad. So please know that you can do anything and everything, but we want you to just take those chances and have fun with this. As I mentioned before, we have a lot of amenities and resources spread out throughout the entire campus. Um, and the same goes for our different residence halls for all of our students. So as a freshman, you have 13 different residence halls that you can choose from spread out among our four different neighborhoods on our campus. And it's great because you really will get a chance to be in communities where you're with others who have very similar interests. Uh, so please make the most of that. You are required to live on campus your freshman year, which is something that we absolutely love. Uh, but it's great because you will get to, once again, build that foundation. Um, and that's something that we think really does make that IU experience that much better. You can live on campus all 40 years if you would like, but it's not required, just that freshman year. Now, one of my favorite parts about being on campus and being immersed within the community is that you're going to get that opportunity to do anything and everything outside the classroom. So we want you to have that balance. With over 750 different clubs and organizations, you can do anything and everything from academic clubs to Greek life. We have student government, we have cultural clubs, intramural sports, club sports, you name it. Our goal is to make sure that you have that balance. That's something that's very important to us. 
Uh, we're also going to really promote the arts and cultures. I mean, the arts and cultural clubs because it's really important for us to be able to let you know that there's so much more out there. Uh, we want you to be able to tap into your artistic side. Uh, now, saying all this is great, but we want you to be able to also live it. So being able to be a part of the fun traditions that we have on campus is something that's really exciting. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, this tradition is going to be our dance marathon. And with the IU Dance Marathon, we actually dance for 36 hours straight. Uh, we raise money for our children's hospital, which is fantastic. And it's something that we really do think is truly incredible for the community uh, as a whole. Another fun tradition is going to be our culture fest. Uh, we're, once again, very big into culture. And it's great because you're going to actually get to experience different foods from all across Bloomington uh, and on our campus. And it, it's wonderful because you're learning about different cultures from all across the world. Uh, so really make the most of this. And I'm a little biased, but one of my favorite traditions will be any of our athletic events. We are in the Big Ten Conference, which is absolutely exciting, but you get to bleed that cream and crimson. Now, as you're going through the process for your application, uh, I do encourage you just to pay attention and make sure that you're having all your ducks in a row. We do have two different applications that we'll utilize. Uh, on the screen, you'll see a third, but this year we're not utilizing the, com excuse me, the coalition application. So we'll use the IU application, which is on our website, or the common application. So please make sure that you're paying attention to which one you're using. We have no preference. With each application, you do have supplemental materials that are provided uh, or excuse me, that are necessary in order for us to have a complete application. So you'll need your uh, official payment as well as the official IU essay. We're going to need your official high school transcript. And if you would like to apply test inclusive, you can do that. We are a test optional university, so you have the opportunity to apply test optional if you would like, but that's truly up to you. Uh, and additionally, I do encourage all students to pay attention to any of our deadlines, um, the most important being November 1st, which is our early action deadline. So it's non-binding. We're not handcuffing you, telling you that you have to come. We're simply letting you know that uh, by doing this, you're making yourself eligible for the maximum amount of scholarships, as well as for direct admission into any of our programs. So please keep that in mind. Uh, and that's the end of my presentation, but I'll put in my contact information in the chat and I'm going to pass it on to Katie at Northeastern. So thank you guys very much. Awesome. Thanks, Dexter. Give me one second for my sharing the screen. Um, as Dexter said, my name is Katie Congdon. I am coming at you from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. I know I don't have long to chat here, so I'm just gonna jump right in. Northeastern University is a large private tier one research university located in the heart of downtown Boston. Our student population is um, primarily made up of about 18,000 undergraduate students with an additional 9,000 graduate students. We have a very student centered approach to learning as you see on the screen here, which really allows each student to chart their own academic path. We currently offer over 250 majors, which include both single and combined options within our eight colleges and programs. Our core curriculum or NU path allows students to choose courses based on the competencies that they'll receive and the knowledge they'll receive by taking those courses, rather than picking courses just really based on those titles. Um, so this really allows for a lot of flexibility and natural ability to take courses across all different colleges here. At the center of everything Northeastern, you're gonna find our robust experiential learning opportunities, including our world famous co-op program. Now, if you aren't familiar, co-op is a six month long full-time employment opportunity. So students are working a full-time job, usually working about 40 hours a week. They are not taking courses during this time, which also means they're not paying for tuition. Now, this is not an internship program. While an internship gives an initial taste of a job, a fully immersive co-op like the one that we offer here really allows students to take true responsibility and make a real impact at a company or organization that they're working at. The integrated nature of our co-op really enhances both the academic growth and professional skill development. We currently work with over 3,400 co-op employers and these are located all over the world 
Boston, the West Coast, and beyond. We currently have now co-op employers on every single continent, including Antarctica. So if you really want to challenge yourself, maybe winters here in Boston aren't enough for you, you can definitely travel abroad and try that in Antarctica. Our co-op employers, for the most part, include Fortune 100 companies. We work with global government agencies, nonprofit startups, healthcare clinics, medical facilities, you name it. We're working with everyone right now. Students can complete up to three co-op experiences and it's six months in duration each. That's up to 18 months of full-time work experience that you can get on your resume years before graduating college. So definitely something to take into consideration. Now, when we think about um, where you're gonna be learning, I think I'm a little biased here, but Boston is the best college town. We actually have the highest concentration of young people in the country. Believe it or not, there's such a high population of young people that each September, the average age in Boston drops nine years because there's so many young adults that are moving to the city. And you're gonna find that Boston is largely driven by the needs and the interest of all students. And so every corner of Boston is gonna be filled with history and culture. It's very much a traditional city, but also very cutting edge. So really the best of everything everything. A top tier education is investment and also one of the most important and rewarding decisions that you and your family are ever going to make. No pressure. <laughs> At Northeastern, we work really hard to keep the cost affordable while also offering the highest possible educational value. Very briefly, I did just want to mention the Northeastern promise. And at the forefront of this promise is our ability to meet every family's demonstrated need. Now, especially in light of COVID and the financial stress that almost all families are facing right now, it's important to know that we remain dedicated to helping all obtain this valuable Northeastern education. Our application process is gonna fall into four different categories. We have early decision one, early decision two, early action and regular decision. Do keep in mind that our binding decisions are gonna be ED1 and ED2. Non-binding are the others, that's EA and RD. I do wanna share a quick plug here for our new test optional policy. This is gonna be our second year using this policy. And um, if you're a student who wasn't able to take a test or just truly wants to make your efforts and energies put towards something else this year, you don't need a test to be able to apply for Northeastern. You will still be reviewed for general admission, admission to our honors program, and also all merit-based scholarships. Now, when you consider our academics, amazing experiential learning opportunities, and our location, again, on my little biased here, you're gonna start to see how Northeastern education really gives students a big head start in the world. So when they graduate, they already have resumes that are full of experiences, which is one of the reasons why employers actively seek out our graduates. Now, I know I've flown through these slides, happy to help answer any questions in the Q&A, and I will definitely be sure to leave my contact information in the chat box. I am the representative for all of Northern California, so no pressure at all. I will be the one reviewing your application, and I would love to connect with you soon. Thank you so much, and I hope the rest of the evening is helpful for you as you make your college decision. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for spending your evening with us. I will be talking about beautiful, bold, bo brilliant Beloit College located in Beloit, Wisconsin, up in the north Midwest of the United States. My name is Hernan. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Beloit College, but most importantly, I'm a proud Beloit alum, someone who graduated from here, loved his experience so much so that I decided to stay and work for the school and actually flew 3,000 miles sight unseen as an international student to this wonderful school. And although it's rather impossible to really capture the magic of an institution like Beloit within six minutes, I'll try my very best. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is talking about numbers. So every number at Beloit tells a story, which is a bit of an irony since when you're a student at Beloit, you're anything but a number. What I mean that by that is we are a small college. We have a little over 1,200 students, uh, but those powerful, brilliant, intellectually curious 1,200 students represent incredible diversity. In fact, we are Wisconsin's most diverse college. 
And as you can see, some of our most popular majors, that reflects also a diversity of thought, which is so incredibly important in college, including majors such as anthropology, biochemistry, creative writing, business, economics, education, youth and youth studies, and psychology. And one of the most beautiful things about a liberal arts education like Beloit's is that you can really try two completely separate things like biochemistry and creative writing and do both at the same time to incredible success. In fact, one third of our students choose to do so. And that's something really quite special about a Beloit education. And because you get that really incredible interdisciplinary approach to education, you also get a pretty phenomenal return on your investment where 93% of our students within six months of graduating from Beloit are employed or in graduation. So if you're really looking for that small class size, that spectacular attention to detail from your professors, that mentorship, uh, that's the perfect place to consider Beloit. In. And speaking of mentorship, Beloit really has reimagined what mentorship and advising means. One of the ways in which we do that is through our advanced mentoring program, which promises you that within 72 hours, three days of choosing Beloit, you'll already get matched with a professor who will be your academic advisor for the first two years or until you declare your major, since you have all that time and freedom to explore what it is you really want to do. So let's say you apply to Beloit early in the fall, you get admitted and you choose to become a Beloiter, let's say in February, within three days of that, we're already connecting with you very frequently to make sure that you come into Beloit knowing how things work. And then the next part of that is the Career Channels Program, as you can see a few listed there, a really phenomenal opportunity for you to use these broad groups as springboards for your professional career. What industries do you want to explore? What type of courses, internships, curated experiences do you want to have prior to your graduation so that you make sure that once you go out into working uh, in the world or going into grad school, you have the best possible resume under your belt. So that's really quite fantastic. Now, beyond the phenomenal academics that we have at Beloit, we also have a really vibrant community and one that by any measure is really designed for you for you to enjoy, to explore, to improve upon even. And that's something that I like quite a bit about campus, certainly while I was here, there was such agency within the education that you uh, received here. And at the end of the day, Beloit really is for doers, not for watchers. So if you're a doer, you come to a campus like Beloit and you're more than just a great student, you're a brilliant community member. And one of the ways in which you know all of that is catalyzed at Beloit is through our powerhouse, that building that you see picture there, this old factory that has been in the city for a hundred years and Beloit has actually remade it entirely from the inside out um, to hold a pool, an auditorium, a cafe, a club hub, a track suspended on the second floor. And it's really the coolest campus building I've ever seen. A few other things about our community is that we are an NCAA Division III 18 varsity team school. We have some phenomenal special interest housing for our residential side. Downtown Beloit, which is this beautiful picturesque American little town is a, is a five minute walk from campus. There's incredible opportunities for student engagement and leadership, clubs, organization, intramural sports, and some awesome campus employment opportunities, which actually is the reason why I'm here and it ended up working really, really well. So this last year has definitely been a challenge, but it's one that Beloit has turned into an opportunity, so much so that we've actually been recognized by the US News and World Report as the number five most innovative liberal arts college in the country. Part of that is through our Beloit Action Plan and another part through our Statement of Culture. I encourage you to read both of those things in our website. Uh, but at the end of the day, the idea, the philosophy behind Beloit being the oldest college in Wisconsin before Wisconsin was even a state is that we find a way. We are always at the forefront of your education. And that is what makes us really, really spectacular when it comes to academics, community, and experiences that take you outside of class as well. Now, a few quick admissions fact that will be important for you to know is that the average GPA from our applicants are around 3.4. So if you have something under that, that doesn't mean that you won't get in. We do practice holistic review at Beloit, meaning we take 
quite a bit of uh, interest in your essay, your letter of recommendation, your transcript, not only in terms of grades, but the type of classes that you've taken, extracurricular activities, we're test optional, we have no application fee, and about 99, 98% of our students receive financial aid. So we really can be an incredibly affordable option and have also been mentioned in several instances as being one of the best value schools in the country. Now, those six minutes are up, but if you'd like to contact me for information, please take a quick picture of my contact information here. Uh, you can email me, call, text, even schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with every single student or parent who would like me to. I absolutely love my job. I love Beloit College, and there's nothing more I like to do than to connect with you. Thank you very much. Thank you for spending some time with us this evening, and enjoy the rest of the presentations. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Rochelle Ehrman. I'm an assistant dean of admission at Claremont McKenna College, which is in Claremont, California, about 30 miles east of Los Angeles. Um, we are a part of the Claremont College Consortium, Consortium, which you may have heard of. It's a consortium of five undergraduate colleges and two graduate universities. But the graduate universities are really tangential to the experience of undergrad, so we're not going to worry about that too much. But know that the five C's or the Claremont colleges, whatever we're talking about, that's five undergraduate liberal arts institutions um, that all border each other and share the same campus area. Uh, CMC was founded in 1946. We were the third of the five Claremont colleges founded. Um, we have a student population of about 1,300, but overall in the Claremont colleges, there are about 6,000 students. So we are in of, its, in of ourselves a small liberal arts college, but we are part of a larger community of about 6,000 students that allows for a lot more um, academic opportunities, social engagement, all of that. We were founded just after World War II um, with the GI Bill, and a lot of our first students were GIs just coming back from the war. Um, so we were founded with this idea that we wanted to educate responsible future leaders in economics, government, and the professions. That has really expanded over the years. The professions, what all of that means, has really come to encapsulate a full liberal arts curriculum of arts, or I'm sorry, of humanities, social sciences, and STEM programs. We offer about 33 majors and 12 sequences. The sequences are similar to minors, but are much more interdisciplinary and are not offered as majors. And we do offer the opportunity for students to dual or double major. You can also take advantage of classes across the five colleges in the consortium. You can cross register at any of the other schools. You can also major at any of the other schools if you want. And you can take to up to one half of your classes at the other colleges if you wish. We have an eight to one student to faculty ratio at CMC and about and uh, seven, our average class size is 17. So our classes are discussion based, they're engaging, 100% professor taught. So you really get to know your faculty, the other students in your classes, and you really get that depth that you're looking for in your education. We also talk a lot about learning for the sake of doing at CMC. So taking what you learn in the classroom and being able to apply it to um, real life and real experiences. One of that is one of those ways is through research. We offer 11 research institutes at CMC. All of them focus on different areas. McGrubley Center for Human Rights, Kravis Leadership Institute, Rose Center for State and Local Government. Those are all different um, research institutes that we offer. Students can start working in the institute their first year. You can also do direct research one-on-one -on -one with faculty through departments and specific programs that faculty are working on. So almost 80% of our students do research while they're at CMC starting that very first year that you arrive on campus. We also offer off-campus study. About 40% of students study off-campus in over um, 40 countries and more than 100 programs. We offer two special CMC domestic programs, one in Washington, D.C. and one in Silicon Valley that are full-time internship study uh, or off-campus study programs. So you can live, learn, and have a full-time internship in one of those two places. The Soul Center for Student Opportunity offers a really great support system for students looking for um, 
pre-professional and pre-professional opportunities. Um, we have a huge success rate in finding students internships both during their time at CMC and then jobs after they leave. 95% of our students do at least one internship by the time they graduate and over half of our students do three, which is one each summer before they graduate. And we have a sponsored internship and experiences program that funds students who have unpaid or underpaid internships. And last year we spent almost $2 million for over 500 of our students to do unpaid internships. So those are only students who aren't getting paid. That doesn't include all the students who got internships that were paid. And our career advisors specialize in industry areas so that they are really able to connect you with alums, to get you the to, to, to connect you with recruiters on campus, to help you with mock interviews, resumes, cover letters, all of that. Um, the Athenaeum is the heart and soul of our discourse on campus. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so four nights a week throughout the entire academic year, we bring a speaker to campus to give a talk and have a sit down meal with our students, um, as you can see in this photo. And um, the first seven students who sign up actually get to sit at the head table with um, the speaker. So you can see some really cool names up on your screen. Um, you never know, you could be sitting across from the next president or a past president or someone else that's really um, a leader in their field through the speaker series. Um, and the dinner is part of your meal plan so it doesn't cost extra. Um, there's also a Q&A portion of the Athenaeum so you really get to engage with the speakers. Student life is another place where we sort of do our own thing and have a combination with the other five C's. Um, we do our own residential life, but we do have over 105 C clubs and organizations, in addition to the 50 or so that are just for CMC students. About a third of our students play varsity sports. We combine with Harvey Mudd College and Scripps College to form CMS athletics, and then Pomona Pitzer are the other team in the five C's. So we have programs, clubs, organizations on campus that are just for CMC students. And then we also have five C ones that are available for you to engage with students on the other campuses. And we also share our dining facilities, which is another opportunity to engage across the five C's. So I'm almost out of time. Just gonna quickly put this up on your screen and um, let you know that we do have interviews and optional videos that are optional, but highly recommended. And you can get more information on our website. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gary Ross. I'm Vice President for Admission and Financial Aid at Colgate University. Colgate University is a liberal arts college located in Hamilton, New York. Hamilton, New York is about four hours north of New York City. It's about 50 minutes from the Syracuse airport, the airport you would use if you were traveling to us by plane. We have about 3,000 undergraduate students, uh, 56 majors. Uh, you don't need to declare a major until the second part of your sophomore year. We are uh, have about two thirds to 70% of our students participating in off-campus study. Of course, during a non-pandemic period, that would be the case. And 23 programs are run directly by Colgate faculty. They travel all around the world. Um, we're also affiliated with about 125 other programs. If you're receiving financial aid, your financial aid travels with you on any of our programs or any of the programs with which we are affiliated. Speaking of financial aid, we have a long history of meeting 100% of the demonstrated need of all admitted students. And two years ago, we introduced a program that enables students who come from families with income levels less than $125,000 a year to have no loans built into their aid package. For those of you who might uh, be a part of QuestBridge or Service to School, we're partners with both of those outstanding organizations. We'd certainly welcome hearing from you. And I'll be talking in a little while about our Division I athletic program. But first, I want to introduce you to the campus, a campus which has been uh, recognized twice in the last 10 years by the Princeton Review as the number one most beautiful college campus in the country. 
We are rural, um, but we are in a very friendly, beautiful community, a wonderful small town called Hamilton, New York. Forbes magazine actually calls Hamilton, New York, the 11th friendliest small town in the United States. I find that highly offensive. I think it's the most friendly small town in uh, the United States. What's the best reason to go to any college or university? I think we could all agree the best reason is to get a great education. And for us, that begins in the classroom. The average class size is 17, student faculty ratio nine to one. You'll never ever be taught by a TA or teaching assistant. This is one of our labs. And while some schools like to talk about their big labs, we prefer to talk about our small labs because instead of being lectured to about science, in this case, it's a biology lab, we'd rather have our students, and you see two of them here work hands-on with the professors so they can actually do science. This is another one of our classrooms. Um, all first year students at Colgate take what's called a first year seminar. It's led by a professor who's going to be uh, your academic advisor for your first two years or until you declare a major and choose your own advisor. This professor is named Peter Balakian, and he is a Pulitzer Prize winning author and poet. Um, you will never be taught by Professor Balakian's teaching assistant because as I mentioned, we do not have teaching assistants in any of our classes. Outside of the classroom, we are a very active, vibrant community with over 200 different clubs and activities and organizations. We're also one of the smallest colleges or universities in the country to have a full division one athletics program. This is our men's ice hockey team. Our women's ice hockey team was nationally ranked this year and went on to the NCAA's uh, postseason tournament, as did our men's basketball team, which was in March Madness. We also have a very active club and intramural sports program as well as an opportunity to pursue an outstanding outdoor education and wilderness exploration program. One of the things that makes me proudest about Colgate students is that they care very deeply about each other and they care very deeply about the surrounding community. Many, many Colgate students take the opportunity to volunteer and support our community in a wide variety of ways. There are two students, the one, the person on the right and the person on the left are both students. They are volunteer firefighters. They're being trained here by the chief of the fire department. So at Colgate, you can not only impact other people's lives through the service that you provide, you can save other people's lives. This slide reminds me that um, my time is nearing an end. And so I wanna talk to you about Colgate students and what happens after they become uh, alums. Uh, prior to the time that they become alums, there is uh, career counseling and advising offered from literally your first week on our campus. And that prepares you for success and leadership in a wide variety of fields. 98% of our most recent graduating class, pre-pandemic class, was enabled to have a job, be in graduate school, or otherwise do what they wanted to be doing, 98%. I'm gonna talk about one of those people in closing, Congressman Antonio Delgado, the first African-American elected from his district uh, in the Hudson Valley of New York State. Uh, he is a leader, he is a visionary, he is a humanitarian, he's a brilliant man. He was a Rhodes Scholar uh, when he was at Colgate. And Congressman Delgado, uh, as well as many, many other people who you may not even know are Colgate graduates, recognize the excellence that you can find during the course of your four undergraduate years and for a lifetime thereafter. Thanks very much for your time. I'll put my contact information and an opportunity to join our mailing list in the chat. Hey everyone, my name is Alex Munoz and I'm with uh, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. As you can tell in this photo, we're about 10 minutes north of downtown Dallas, um, but we are located in a neighborhood. We're in a pretty residential area. 
Um, so you do get the best both worlds with the immediate location of where we are, but major city about 10 minutes down the road. Um, at SMU, we're medium size. We're about 6,700 undergraduates, which I think is perfect size, not too big, not too small. And the incoming freshman class is about six, uh, 1,500 students. Um, so we do try to keep that size so we can stay the 6,700 undergrad that we have right now. Uh, you can also see the breakdown of where students are coming from. You can tell last year's freshman class, we had about 37% from the state of Texas, about 58% from the other 49 states, and about 5% international. So it's a really diverse student body. People coming from all over the country and all over the world. Um, it's not uncommon to possibly come to SME, maybe not knowing anyone, and uh, ready to branch out and meet new people. Our top five states besides Texas on campus are going to be California, Florida, Connecticut, Missouri, and Illinois. So again, you get to meet people from all over. Our average class size is about 24 to 25 students. So you really get to professors. They get to know you. They actually take attendance in every single class. So they know you're there. They know you're not there. They hold you accountable for going. Um, we do have over 100 majors and minors. And they're all split between the five different colleges that you see on your uh, screen. And when you're applying to the university, on the application, it's going to ask you if you're number one and number two preferred major. You're not bound to that major. You can always change that once you get here, but definitely express whatever interest you may have. Um, and the first year, year and a half, you can kind of dabble with everything, find out what you're passionate about if you want as well. The only colleges or programs to keep an eye out on is if you're interested in the arts, make sure you do uh, submit a portfolio if you're wanting to be reviewed for the visual arts. Or if you're a performing artist, make sure you do an audition so you can be reviewed for those areas, as well as the business school. If you are interested in business, you need to make sure that you indicate business or a business major as your preferred major so they can review for admission to that college. You don't need to do anything additional for your application. You're applying through our central admission office, but the business school will review for their college as long as you indicate an interest in those academic fields. The other three that you'll see on this slide Edmond College of Humanities, English, Math, History, Foreign Languages. Lyle School of Engineering has about 28 different specializations in engineering, so many different options to choose from. And then the fifth college, Simmons School, has where you're gonna find education as well as sports management if you wanna go into sports industry. The other cool thing about academics at SMU is that if you have multiple interests, we like to say you're multi-interested um, and you wanna double major, about 50% of our students double major. And so you can double major within one college or between two different colleges or major in one, minor in another. Um, it's a really great place to be able to explore whatever your passions may be. Another big thing about the SMU experience is gonna be your uh, involvement outside the classroom. Uh, if you wanna get involved with clubs, organizations, going to sporting events, there's always something happening on campus. We are division one in athletics. We have 17 division one teams. And you can get in all the athletic events for free with your student ID. So if you want to go watch basketball, football, soccer, go check them all out. And uh, our, bat our football team actually last year was ranked in the top 25 in the country. So it's always fun to go, uh, go watch them and uh, see how well they do. You are required to live on campus for your first two years and you're guaranteed housing for your first two years. Your third and fourth year is optional, so you can stay on campus if you like or you move off if you like. That is up to you, but the first two years are guaranteed and required. And then I think one of the other big selling points of SMU is going to be our location. Our location of Dallas is an amazing opportunity with jobs, internships, um, and everything that comes with a major metropolitan area. Dallas is uh, ranked number three for most Fortune 500 headquarters, number two for most companies on New York Stock Exchange. Seems like every week some new company is relocating to the DFW area. Um, so it's an amazing place to be. SMU is the only Division I university in the city of Dallas, as well as we are the closest university to downtown Dallas. So when these companies need new interns, new employees, we're their first stop. We are Dallas's team. Um, the downtown area lights up red and blue when our teams win. And so it's a really great uh, supporting network for our students. Um, and Dallas is also a fun city. It has all five major sports teams, so you can go watch Mavs, Stars, Cowboys, FC Dallas games. Um, and that's always fun too. When you're applying to SMU, we have two different deadlines, November 1st, and you'll receive your decision in mid-December, or if you apply by January 15th, you will receive your decision in mid-March. I always encourage students to try to apply by November 1st so you can get your decision early and you have plenty of time to get all your questions answered. And you'll see the applications that we accept on the bottom right. I always encourage the Common App because that is the easiest one if you're applying to schools all over the country. Just select SMU off on that list and uh, that'll work. 
Another big thing with SMU is that you're automatically reviewed for all of our scholarships when you apply. You don't need to individually apply for scholarships. Just submit your application to the university. That's your application for everything. We are test optional this upcoming year, so you are not required to submit a test score if you don't want to, or if you did take the test and you um, didn't do that well, don't worry about sending it to us. You will still be reviewed for all the same, same scholarships with or without a test score. And then if you want to be reviewed for need-based aid, make sure you submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile. So that is my six minutes. And uh, if you have questions, my email's on the screen. I'm gonna post in the chat my email as well, as well as a link to submit our interest form if you wanna get on our email list and get more information about us and you. And thanks again. Thank you to all of our presenters. With that said, that was the conclusion of our presentation portion, but we're now gonna move over to the Q&A. So I wanna encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn your cameras on and I will pose a question to the group while our attendees are typing their questions um, in that Q&A box. The first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Feel free to respond in the order in which you present it. Yeah, so uh, my piece of advice to everyone is going to be really just try to be yourself. Um, we can only obviously see uh, what you put in the application and the supporting materials, but just try to be yourself. Let us know who you are through that essay. Uh, and, and as mentioned in most of, if not all of these presentations, uh, go ahead and set up some sort of uh, interview or uh, meeting with us. That way we can get to know you a little bit better. I think my biggest piece of advice is just stay open-minded. Um, don't check out someplace just because your BFF is also checking out the same place. Really um, remain kind of steadfast in what you're looking for. Maybe you don't know what you're looking for. So just kind of try everything. Look at a small liberal arts and look at a large private research university. So um, check us all out. We all have something special to offer you. Great advice, Katie, indeed. A small liberal arts college. Um, I would recommend enjoying it as much as you can. Uh, it can be a very stressful process as you look through colleges and universities. It may seem overwhelming in that you need to have a million things and have accomplished a million things before turning 18 uh, in order to make it where you want to be. But enjoy it. Know that there are some phenomenal options out there for you. Broaden your horizons and know that we're here to help and hopefully make the process easier for you. Um, I agree with a lot of what's been said. I would say also think about what you're looking for, what interests you, but what you're also open minded about and what, you know, if you decide that you're going to, if you change your mind later, like what's going to be available, if you want to try something new, if you find something slightly different that interests you more, what are your options? Um, just thinking about like what you, what you know you're interested in, but also what you could be interested in. I'm going to give two pieces of advice. One, pay attention to the great advice that my colleagues have already given you. Uh, each, each person's really nailed it, in my opinion. And then secondly, um, I would suggest that you begin to think about recommendations. Sometimes the importance of recommendations may not be fully appreciated by applicants, but at uh, certainly a place like ours, uh, we care a lot about uh, what your teachers are saying about you. So I'm assuming most of the people on the Zoom call tonight are probably juniors. Um, do your teacher a big favor. If you've already identified teachers who are going to write recommendations for you, let them know so that they can have the summer to begin thinking about it and also offer to meet with them so that they can have the opportunity to get to know you. I think we all saw in the um, application review that we did before the uh, start of the program tonight, the mock application review, that with some candidates, recommendations really made a significant impact. So make sure you take advantage of the opportunity to get to know your teachers. Yeah, I think my, uh, my big recommendation, I know this is uh, an exciting time right now and kicking that whole call search process off, but explore all of our websites and whichever colleges you're interested in, because over this past year of COVID, we've all created some really creative, I think, virtual events and ways to connect with our campuses. 
Um, so definitely explore your college websites you're interested in so you can uh, see what else is out there and you might be able to learn something different from a different perspective that you didn't think about. Thank you all for sharing and providing advice. With that said, this concludes our virtual college fair for today, but I have a few closing announcements. As you exit from the Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. Also wanna remind you to sign up for additional sessions by visiting our registration site. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. I want to thank our amazing panelists for joining us, um, but also thank you to our amazing attendees. I hope everyone has a great evening.